Let's just stand and just glorify Him this morning. Let's not be ashamed. And let's just step out because God wasn't ashamed of you when He walked up Calvary's hill.
Sunday school. That's why we were late. Just about the power of your testimony and just the, the things that God does for you that um, a lot of times we forget about whenever we go through trials and, and struggles. You know, we forget what he's done for us. Um, and then it's just uplifting to hear other people share what God's doing for them. And it just carries you through and, and over. And this song always makes me think of that. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment when I wake up till I lay my head, I will see of the goodness of God. So my life you have been faithful. So my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the good Your voice, you have led me through the fire and darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness. Just for me, but 
God said, I'm about to pour my spirit out before it's finished. And I looked around and everybody was carrying umbrellas. And I was thinking, Lord, I don't want to block that. I don't want to be so caught up in this life where I'm not focused on you that when you pour it out, I miss it. So I'm going to stop being ashamed to praise. I'm going to, be, I'm going to stop being ashamed to stand up because I'm worried what somebody might think because God created us. You know, he chose each of us as individuals. He formed us in the womb, and here we're, we're worried about praising the, the very Savior that created us and loved us. So I know I'm going to try to do a better job because that really hit me this morning because I get so caught up in what everybody else might think. But I need to be worried about what God thinks of me. So. When I'm in my head, just get started. When I hit you just walk through when I face a mountain you are the master so it's got to move you when I'm out of faith you are still faithful when I'm at my worst you are still good and all of my questions you are the answer it all points to you Lord. you're the God of the breakthrough when I'm breaking down you'll be working your way through when there's no way out this one thing I know you're still on your throne so whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. Out of our wrongs, you write our story. Out of the cross comes a river. Come around, dry bones, they come. 
the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working your way through. When there's no way out, this one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to pray. God, I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for the spirit that we felt. Lord, I thank you for that song. God, you know that we got up this morning. We were settled. We were ready to go. And God, we had a message prepared talking about the final Elijah. The third paradigm of Elijah. But God, I know right now. Lord, I know that's not the direction we've got to go. Maybe, just maybe, somebody in the congregation, maybe somebody watching on Facebook or maybe inside the congregation today, maybe somebody needs to experience a breakthrough in their life. Maybe they feel like they're going through quicksand or through uh, the miry clay. David even said, Lord, through the miry clay, I'm going to go. And I know sometimes, God, it feels like things are heavy. I know that things are troublesome. God, I know that we've all got family problems. We've all got lost loved ones. We've all got something that's going on in our life that's a sense of discouragement. And God, I feel like in my heart and in my soul this morning with nothing really planned, no direction to go until just a few minutes ago that maybe, maybe we need to understand Understand that what is hindering a breakthrough is the simple fact that we walk around discouraged. So God, right now, God, as we try to maybe maybe try to share just a thought real quickly, God, I pray, Lord, that we would absolutely crucify the discouragement that's in our life right now. You said you took every burden, you took every sin, you took every grief, you took every bit of confusion, you took every bit of turmoil, you took every bit of devastation, you took every bit of bitterness and anger and all these things. You took them to a cross. And God, when they nailed you to a cross, the echo of that hammer has been ringing throughout all of eternity. And God, I am so thankful that in my spirit that that echo that is ringing grace and mercy and truth and salvation. God, I thank you for what I heard God say yesterday. That God, when you give me the gift of eternal life, you didn't give me a sense of probation, but you give me salvation through and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, in your name I pray. Amen. I went back to Dirk just now. And I remember I've been sitting about Elijah and Elisha. Guys, just stay there. Keep that song in tune. <coughs> We've been on Elijah and Elisha for a long time. And I read something the other day on the first Kings 19. And somehow or another, come back, it was God come back to my memory and my thought processing just a few minutes ago when they mentioned the God of the breakthrough. He's an on time, any time, always prime time God. That's who we serve. Listen, this might be your first time here. This ain't the way you do things for church. You've ever been. Listen, me neither. I don't like it either. But let me read something about breakthrough, what the Elijah went through. Listen, think about what that song says. As a result of a breakthrough, before the breakthrough can happen, the realization has to become, I've got a reason to praise. Amen. If you've got breath inside of your body, if you are sitting on your derriere right there listening to me and these people sing, you have got reason to praise Him. Think about what happens to Elijah right here. You can bring it up on the screen, Dirk, if you've had time. 1 Kings chapter 19. <laughs> Think about what happens to Elijah. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I may not thy life as life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now think about what's happened to Elijah. I'll get to three and four in a minute. Elijah had just seen the greatest miracle be worked through his hands from the providence of God which is in heaven. And at this moment, we see 450 prophets of Baal, 450 enemies, 450 people who had rather seen Elijah dead. You talk about a sense of discouragement when you walk up and you've got hundreds of people that would rather see you dead than see you standing. I'm telling you right now, there are demons in this life. There are people in this life. There are principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in this life. Lord have mercy. I remember something else. 
that we heard last night. I want you to think about something. When the man named Legion was over there in the land of the Gadarenes, I want you to think about what your spirit contains. How much capacity does the spirit of a saint of God actually contain? The Bible says, we're talking about the Legion, the man who is possessed with a demon over in the land of Gadarenes. Think about what happened in that situation. The Bible says that legions of demons came and consumed that man's spirit. Legions. Hundreds of them came and consumed him. Maybe the reason why you're discouraged today is there's hundreds of little things that's fulfilled your spirit. Hundreds of things you're latching on to. Might be alcohol, might be pornography, might be drugs, maybe material possessions, maybe the next high, maybe the next drive, maybe some in this world. But all these things we go reaching for. You know why it would not fulfill the one who is possessed with a demon? Because there is one thing, there is one man, there is one entity, there is one alpha, there is one omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, who can fill that void. But yet it takes thousands, maybe even hundreds of little habits to try to get our fix. We want to be filled all the time. Now think about what's happening right here with Elijah. (coughs) Elijah just went and he's proven the doubters wrong. He prays and he says, God, send down your fire upon this drenched altar. And the Bible says the fire from God fell and he drenched up the altar and consumed the burnt offering, consumed the wet offering, the wet sacrifice and the wet altar and destroyed and killed all of his enemies. Now he just experienced that. The high of highs. But I want you to know something, child of God, when you're experiencing the high of highs and you're in a spiritual euphoric state, maybe someone in your family gets saved, maybe God really answers a prayer. At that moment is when your guard has been let down. And at that moment is when you can be, you would think you'd be, um, you'd think that would be the most strongest you could ever be. But right then, that's when Satan tries to creep in the back door and he'll bring forth doubt. He'll bring forth confusion. What happened to Elijah? Look here. And when he saw that, he arose. He saw that Jezebel wanted to kill him. And the Bible says after seeing the great move of God that he experienced, that he immediately went away. And the Bible says in verse 4, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. Think about what's happened right there. In that moment, Elijah had just experienced the greatest move of God, in my opinion, that happened in his life. And then just a few moments later, you're talking about riding a roller coaster. Just a few moments later, instead of riding out and seeing the breakthrough in his life and experiencing a breakthrough, he gets overwhelmed with a sense of discouragement. Look what he says. He says, go God, it is enough. Take away my life. Have you ever been so discouraged? (laughs) Have you ever been so discouraged that you thought it'd just be better if I was dead? Have you ever been so discouraged that you've just thought, man, <laughs> this would be a re- I've never thought, I've never, I've never, I've never went the suicide route. I know a lot of people have. Mental health is a real thing. But I have thought a lot in my spirit. Man, I just wish the Lord would come back tomorrow. I don't want to face what I'm going to have to face tomorrow. Lord, that, that, when Donna was diagnosed with cancer, God, I don't want to have to go to her and I don't want to have to sit down in front of her and we're going to cry because I don't know why this has happened three or four times. Maybe you've had someone in your life that's had a bad diagnosis. Maybe you're like with Angela Carroll, girl I went to school with, and tomorrow they've got her mommy laid out uh, where she had passed away and on Monday they're going to bury her. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought, Lord, just come now. Just come. It'd be a lot better if I wouldn't have to endure this. Notice what he's saying. He said, Jezebel's after me. He said, Jezebel's after me. And I don't want to have to put up with it. It is enough. He needed a breakthrough. Think about what a breakthrough is. A breakthrough is a new development on the scene. A breakthrough is a new discovery that you found in your life. I'm telling you right now, the thing that I've realized in my life is no matter what happens, at every turn, I see a new marking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I see a breakthrough. I see a discovery. I see new information at every turn. You know how? Because every time I get discouraged, I remember Romans 8, 20, all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. But a lot of times we miss it. Think about this. Our flesh seeks a breakthrough through a new job. Our flesh seeks a breakthrough through our home being fixed or our enemies being suppressed. Think about what Solomon said. <coughs> Maybe you're here. I'm going to come around and circumvent this thing back. Maybe you're here and you've got maybe problems in your family 
You know what, you know what the breakthrough for Solomon was? He had hundreds of wives and hundreds of concubines. He was, listen, this dude had family problems. He had homes. He had his home was a place of desolation. He was, he was alone. With all them wives and all them concubines, all them kids, he still felt alone. But you know what he wrote in the book of Proverbs? You know where his breakthrough came from? Was the realization when he wrote, no matter what happens, I have realized that the Lord is on my side. Listen, the prerequisite for a breakthrough in your life is you have to realize that God is not for, God is not against you, but He is for you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you comfortless. I'll go with you all the way to the end. you just got to trust me. That's what he says. Think about this. David said his breakthrough after his little boy had died, his baby had died. And I don't know if it was a boy, but his baby had died. His buddy he had murdered. David's breakthrough said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not mourn. He said in one place, he said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Your breakthrough cannot come from no from material possession. Your breakthrough is not supposed to come through an emotional high where you get chill bumps going up and down your spine. Your breakthrough comes from the reality that Jesus is who he said he was. That Jesus did what he said he was going to do. And that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is coming again on the basis that he cannot lie. That's the formula for a breakthrough. Now look in your Bible right here in 1 Kings 19. We see in the first four verses, Dirk had it on the screen. If you, if you remember verse 7? <coughs> for the first four verses, he said, it's enough. He said, I'm no better than my father's. Take me now. But notice what happens in verse 7. He had a dream. And the angel of the Lord came unto him the second time. And he touched him and said, arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for thee. You want to experience a breakthrough. You need to experience something. You need God to move in your life. You've got to realize, verse 7, the journey is too great for you to do it alone. Listen, I'm telling you right now, I believe that hell has got more arrogance and pride and ego in there than they do drunkards and rapists and murderers. And I'm telling you the reason why that a lot of people don't come into the knowledge of salvation and they don't, they don't humbly submit themselves unto God and surrender everything they are to Him is because they think that they've got it all figured out. Let me tell you something. When I am weak, He is made strong. Amen. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You have to have humility enough to know that you cannot do it on your own. You're not going to experience a breakthrough because of something you did and that of your own power. It's not going to happen. Everything that is good, holy, and righteous that comes to the result of our doings or this world is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Elijah was alone. Elijah needed a breakthrough. Let me tell you something that I've realized in my own personal life. Excuse me. You need a breakthrough. You say, I need a public declaration of my breakthrough. I need something to happen in my public life, in my family. I need something to happen in my public career that everybody knows. There is nothing public. Oh, this is good. Private breakthrough will always precede public breakthrough. God is not just a magician up there waving a wand, casting out little blessings wherever he wants to. I'm telling you what, I believe is through the earnest prayer of the righteous. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And I believe it's all my heart. I believe if you want to see God move in your life, it's going to take you crawling inside of your bed in the sheets at the midnight at night. Nobody's around. And I'm telling you, you need a private breakthrough. You need to go home. I say this all the time. But you need to go home, get you a piece of chalk, draw you a circle, stand inside that circle, and pray that God sends the revival and the breakthrough into that circle first before it goes anywhere else. Before God can move, before God will move and manifest Himself in a big way around you and to those around you and to your family around you, it has to happen privately with you the individual that's why we give an altar call every service it ain't because everybody I know people come up here and they'll probably gather around you and pray but a private breakthrough is when you get one on one with God and one on one God comes down and listen you may not hear God in an audible voice but you'll know exactly what God is wanting you to do you'll know exactly what God needs to do in your life how you know that I've experienced it time and time again think about this the foundation in verse 7 his breakthrough, his breakthrough wasn't anything short 
of the truth. Let me say this about truth. This is the sermon. I'm not going to get up there and do something else in a minute. Think about what truth is. We're the only people group. We're the only demographic of people in the world. We're the only tribe. We're the only people in the world that possess the, the gospel truth. The real truth. We're the only religion in the world that has the truth. You say, well, Josh, you're not supposed to be judgmental. You're not supposed to be arrogant. You're exactly right. Listen, let me tell you something about the truth. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that I'm supposed to be prideful with my truth. I'm not supposed to be judgmental with my truth. I'm not supposed to be malicious in how I present the truth. But let me be clear. If the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ offends you, that's on you. That's on whoever you talk to. Now, your delivery falls on you. But the tr- listen, the, the, truth, the truth is offensive sometimes. The reason it's offensive, the reason why the truth is hard to handle sometimes is because it shows you that you ain't God. That's what truth does. I asked my wife. I don't ask my wife very much anymore because she's too truthful. And the truth hurts. We was doing that marriage ministry back so many months ago. We was doing all these studies. And I said, Jessica, I said, I think I'm doing a good job. I said, Am I being a good husband? She goes, truthfully? I said, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just hush. <laughs> no. What happens? The truth will set you free. Why? Because it gives you a good reality and a good dose of medicine of what you are and where you need to be and what you ain't. The truth of the Lord Jesus Christ shows me that my righteousness is as filthy rags and that the Lord Jesus is the only way to salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. The truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus tells me that I am worthless in that of myself and that I have to have a Savior. Look in verse 7. The journey is too great for thee. I'm sorry, guys. The journey is too great. Let me tell you something about this breakthrough that maybe you need. Whether it's a spiritual thing, whether it's an emotional thing, whether it's something physical. Do you understand there has never been a breakthrough in human history? Whether it be in civilization, whether it's in society, whether it's in politics, whether it's a sports team, whether it's your mental capacity to handle what was going on, there has never been a breakthrough without opposition. There's never been a breakthrough without setbacks. There's never been a breakthrough in somebody's spiritual life without blunders and heartache and failure. Matter of fact, those things have to happen for you to experience a breakthrough. You know, struggle says the same for a breakthrough. You know what? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, do you remember him crying and sweating tears or sweating blood and crying? And he said, Father, he's, he said, is there any other way? He said, is there any other way? And he was burdened and grieved in his heart and soul. He knew what he had to do. But those things had to happen before the breakthrough, before the resurrection, there had, oh my God, in time, before the resurrection, there had to be a death. There had to be a death. Tragedy brings forth breakthrough. To experience breakthrough takes perseverance, endurance, patience, and faith. I want you to think about this just for a few minutes, and I'm going to quit. I'm going to steal two things from that guy last night. I heard a preacher talking last night, and he was talking about the mother of Moses. How that he didn't use this the way I'm using it, but he talk, I'm talking about breakthrough. You remember the decree that was sent out of all, of all of Egypt? How that all the little boys had to be killed. All the boys, that was, all the little girls could survive, but all the boys had to die. Think about what happened to the mother of Moses. Moses heard that decree, and she said, yep, surely they're going to kill my little boy. All the little boys are going to die. But what did she do? I believe she knelt down. I believe she began to pray. I believe she said, Lord, I need your providence. I need your provision. I need your anointing. I need you to move. This is my baby boy, and I want you to move. And God, I'm willing to give you everything. Here it is. Before you can experience a breakthrough, it takes faith. To experience a breakthrough. I'm not talking about faith. I'm not talking about faith walking up there and I've got faith that if I turn that light switch down, the lights are going to go off. 
Turn that light switch off is dependent upon somebody doing their job. I'm talking about faith. When you say, God, heal this one that's dead right now, and God begins to move. I'm talking about mountain-moving, life-changing, ego-shattering, soul-winning, soul-saving faith. With the faith, the kind of faith the Bible says, if you have the faith of a great mercy seat, you can say, mountain, move, and the mountain would take off running. That kind of faith. So what did Moses' mommy do? She did exactly what God told her to do. She puts this baby, she puts her baby, she had the faith in God, she needed a breakthrough. I believe that the mother of Moses would have kept that baby in her home. I believe that the soldiers would have came and cut that baby's throat in her home. But she was obedient to what God told her to do. What did she do? She puts it in a basket. Floats it down the river, trusting that God would do exactly what he said he would do. But see, what she didn't realize when she acted on faith is that Pharaoh's daughter was just around the corner down there. I don't know if she was washing her hands or bathing or whatever she was doing. And here come that little Israelite baby. And she decided she was going to raise it. And she starts talking about this baby and how it is so beautiful. Now think about the obedience that Mo Moses' mother had. To experience this breakthrough. Not only did she, listen, she could have tried to save Moses' life. And she could have been living in fear the rest of her life. But I'm telling you right now, the Bible says if you're a child of God, that he adopted you into the family of God. And he's given you the spirit of fear, but to see the spirit to be able to move forward and to thrive and not merely survive. And Moses' mommy decided she wasn't going to just survive. But she was going to trust God for a breakthrough. And she was going to thrive in the will of God. So she pushes the baby out. You know the end of the story. The end of the story goes that <coughs> the Egyptian, the Pharaoh's daughter, saves the baby. And by a strange turn of events, they get, they get Moses' mommy to be the one to take care of him. She couldn't have planned it no better. You're talking about a situation. That guy said it a lot better than I'm going to say it. You're talking about a situation where, where she could have kept that baby. Again, she could have kept that baby and tried to... To hide him from the authority he's going to kill him. But she went out on faith praying for a breakthrough. And not only did she get her baby back. Not only did she get to raise her baby every single day. She got paid to do it. And I'm not talking about modern day welfare and check this and check that. I'm talking about God providing a way through the established sinful regime. Paying her to care for her baby. You know what happens with discouragement? Discouragement. Discouragement hinders the breakthrough. That song, you guys sing that song again. Bring that song back up. That song said, I've got a reason to praise Him. Amen. See, here, here's what you got to realize. You've got a reason to praise Him. Discouragement will hinder a breakthrough. Josh, I'm not discouraged, and why ain't you praising Him? You don't praise for two reasons. Number one... You're discouraged, or another two, or the second thing is you're ashamed. I think sometimes after we're on the brink of a breakthrough, and we give up just a little bit too early. I read something this morning, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a miner. Something yesterday made me study this. <coughs> I read about the greatest gold mine. That guy told it wrong, by the way. The greatest gold mine that's been discovered in the past 200 years in America. Think about this. This one guy, <laughs> he went out west during the gold rush and he got out there and he was mining for gold. And he fell in a small scene and he seen how valuable it was. <clears throat> he went back to Massachusetts <clears throat> from being out west. He got all of his family together and they put all their resources and all their money together by a bunch of heavy machinery. This has been I don't know, back in the 40s, 50s, I can't remember. But he takes all this machinery out west. And they start digging. And Lord, I mean, they struck it big. They paid off all the machinery. And they made enough money where they preserved themselves for a few more years. But then the gold seam ran out. The gold seam ran out. They couldn't find it no more. <laughs> the guy was digging with his machines and he got real discouraged. Real discouraged to the point where he just, he was ready to set ablaze to all of his machinery. All the things that he had that he'd been blessed with, he was ready to burn it and get rid of it. He gave it to a local farmer and went home. Absolutely discouraged. 
looking for that breakthrough and it never happened. Your breakthrough is going to take a little bit of effort on your part. <coughs> and your effort means not to give up, not to give in, and not to give out. That farmer took that equipment and he was just an you know, average Joe. He took that equipment and he really didn't know where to look to, didn't know who to talk to, he just had it. Thought about selling it. Then one day he said, you know what, I'm not a very smart guy. Notice what the journey is. The journey is too great for me. I'm a pretty simple guy. This local farmer was a pretty simple guy. The journey was too great for him. He didn't have the knowledge. So what did he do? He went down there to the college and he found an engineer. He found a, a, he found a, a geologist guy. He'd he done all kinds of stuff like that. And that guy told him, he didn't tell him, the farmer didn't tell him all the details, but he said, if you found coal, he said, does it just run out? He said, no, it don't run out. He said, you've got to have an understanding of fault lines. He said, when you start finding the fault line where the main thing was, he said, it is guaranteed to be within 32 inches this direction or 32 inches that direction where the scene picks up. So the guy went down there. He took a loan out from the bank. He got $500 worth of fuel. He fired those machines up. 16 or 17 inches from where the other guy gave up and left off, this guy found the gold. And not only did he find enough for him, I can't remember the millions, the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of gold that he found that set his family up and his children's children up because the journey was too great. The one guy gave up, but he did not give up. Why? He said, I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to go to the source that is higher than me. I'm going to find the guy over here at the college that is smarter than me. Let me tell you something right now. If you really need something to happen in your life, you've got to go to the power that is higher than you. You've got to go, go to the one Isaiah and Jeremiah says, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. His ways are higher than your ways. And I'm telling you right now, the only way to break through is to give God the honor and to give God the praise and to give God the admonition and give God the glory that he rightfully deserves in Jesus Christ. Stand with me. I'm telling you right now, here's the challenge. You've got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He will exalt you in due time. They're going to sing this song again and then I'm going to get out of the way. <coughs> but you've got to come. Jesus said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Josh, this is my first time being here. You have no idea the hell that's went through in my life. No, I don't. But I know this. I know that without beyond a shadow of a doubt that every bit of turmoil, every bit of torment, every bit of agony that I have experienced, that Jesus Christ has always worked it out. And I have realized that hindsight is always 2020. And I've got the fingerprints of an almighty Jehovah God all over my life since the day that I was born. But will you come? Will you praise Him all the way to an altar? Will you seek out the face of God, realizing that the journey is too great for thee? Or will you be like Elijah in verse 7 and say, it's enough? If you walk out of here today and you don't experience God and you don't, rec and you don't repent, the Bible says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and you don't seek His face, and you walk out and you're still discouraged, and you're still alone, and you go back to the same troubles that you've had yesterday, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that is on you. It's on you. Well, Josh, I just can't turn loose of the world. I'm telling you, don't turn loose of it right now. Grab a hold of Jesus, and He'll hold on to you through this ride, and He'll get rid of those things. You ain't got to quit those things before you come to Him. You come to Him, and then those things will fall through the wayside as you take this journey. I promise you. Dear Heavenly Father, with every head bowed, God, as they begin to sing this song, God, I pray for this time of invitation. I know it's a lot different than usual. But God, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, Lord, that you said that you cannot lie. And you said, God, you'd always be faithful. You said you'd always be a very present help in the time of trouble. You said that you'd always be there. But when everything else is dark all around me, you said you'd always have that light bright, that light shining bright. So God, I pray right now. Lord, if there's somebody here and they need to pray, God, maybe it's our church people needs to pray. We've been praying for a burden. We've been praying for a double portion. We've been praying to see lost people saved. We've been praying for miracles to happen. But God, I pray right now, maybe it starts with the simple fact that we have to admit we can't do it without you. God, I pray right now that you bless this time of invitation. God, I pray that the Spirit of the Holy God 
a, a, a convicting spirit will move like a rushing mighty wind. As they begin to sing, God, I pray you'd pour out your spirit and you sweep through this place. And God, I pray that every, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Would you come? Just getting started. <laughs> I hit the wall. Maybe you need to repent of a sin. You just Maybe you just need to through. praise Maybe you just need to acknowledge and acknowledge. Maybe you've been you a little bit more for a little bit too long. So it's and God said, He said, You've been hot and cold. He said, You're lukewarm. I'll speak it out of my mouth. When I'm out of faith, you, God, you are still faithful. faithful. And I don't want to leave nothing when I'm on the table. My worst, Would you come? You are still no good. Call, no one's going to ask you the same thing. All of my questions. Come into the Lord Jesus. You are the answer. Bless my brother. It all points hey, bless to you. Bless you, Lord. Because you're the God oh, of the praise. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working away. There's no way to do this one thing. You're still on your throne. So whatever it be, I still got a reason for
powerful and so merciful. The reason we've got reason to praise Him is because Jesus literally said, it's not a metaphor, it's not some figurative, it's literal. Jesus said, I will cast your sin as far as the east is from the west into a sin of forgetfulness to never be brought up again. Your spouse may remember your misfortunes. Your boss, I assure you, will remember your misfortunes. Your friends, your co-workers may remember where you stumbled. But the Lord Jesus said, I ain't going to. They're going to play one more verse of this song. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I love you. God, I don't want to take, I don't want to be inefficient with people's time. I do want to be respectful of that. But God, I, I, I really feel, whether it's somebody's been here for 25 years or 25 minutes, that maybe today could be the turning point in their life. God, we don't always preach like this. But God, I know, I know that when my feet hit solid ground and I surrendered everything to you, that my life took a radical transformation. The way that I viewed the world, the way that I thought, the way that I loved, the way that I lived, all began to experience a shift and God, I know that's only a product of the grace of an almighty God. And Lord, I pray right now that maybe if somebody don't experience that, they don't be able to feel that on a daily basis, that maybe, Lord, they would accept that today. In your name I pray. Amen. Because you're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you testimony. That could be your war cry. You're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to praise. <laughs> praise. Praise. I still got a reason yeah. to praise. Bruce. Praise. <laughs> Amen. Bless her Lord. Praise. You just got a burden that you've been carrying for a long time. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, you ain't got to carry a devil. You just got to break it. Breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be 